All right, get ready, because today we're going deep on something pretty crazy. Time expansion experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, like when time just seems to completely slow down. Yeah, those moments when everything feels like it's in slow motion. Exactly. We're calling those T's. We're talking those really intense moments where it feels like seconds are stretching out, like way longer. We've got this super interesting excerpt from an article called Time Expansion Experiences, Why Time Slows Down in Altered States of Consciousness. That's going to be our guide for today's deep dive. It's something that happens more than you'd think, you know? Like, research actually says something like 85% of people have had at least one tea in their lives. Seriously? Yeah. 85%? So, like... Almost everyone has felt this. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Okay. So it's not just me then. Yeah. That's a relief, actually. <laughs> but uh, before we get into those wild teas, let's just start with the basics. You know, something we all deal with. We've all had those days that feel like they just drag on forever. Or, you know, those times when time just flies by. Why is that? Why does it feel like our sense of time is always changing? Well, it really comes down to how our brains work, how they process information. Basically, the more new information your brain is taking in, the slower time seems to go. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, think of it like this. When you're a kid, right, everything is new and exciting. Your brain is working over time to process all that new stuff, all the sights and sounds, you know, just all the experiences. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And as a result, time actually seems to move slower for kids. Ah, so that's why summer vacations felt like they lasted forever when I was a kid. It all makes sense now. But what about when we're adults? Like, you know, when you're stuck in a boring meeting and time is just crawling by. It's the same idea, really. When you're bored, your brain isn't really being challenged. There's not a lot of new information to process. So the less there is to process, the faster time seems to go. So the more your brain's working, the slower time feels. Yeah, you got it. Interesting. So, like, our brains are these little timekeepers. They're constantly adjusting our sense of time, depending on what we're doing. Exactly. But those everyday changes in how we perceive time, those are nothing compared to those really mind-bending teas we were talking about. Like those moments when time seems to totally stretch out, like slow motion in a movie almost. So it's like way more intense than just thinking a meeting's taking forever. Wait. What actually causes those like really intense teas? Well, it might surprise you, but about half of all the teas that people report happen during emergencies. You know those fight or flight situations when your adrenaline's going crazy? When every second really counts. So like, does everyone have those in emergencies? Or is there something else that like triggers them? That's a really good question. And to be honest, it's something researchers are still trying to figure out. It doesn't seem like everyone has teas in emergencies. So there's probably some other things going on too. Maybe personality types or even like genetics could play a part. Hmm, that's interesting. You know, the article actually mentions this woman who had a tea while she was driving. She saw this uh, metal barrier like falling toward her car, and she said it felt like the whole thing was happening in slow motion. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that slow motion feeling let her react in time. She like swerved out of the way and avoided it. That's a perfect example of a T, you know? And in those really intense situations, a T could actually be the difference between life and death. Makes you wonder if it's some kind of like evolutionary advantage you know like maybe it gave our ancestors a little extra time to react in dangerous situations yeah that makes sense so we know teas can be like lifesavers in emergencies but what about other times the article also talks about athletes experiencing them you know in those moments where they need to make split second decisions yeah exactly athletes often talk about these moments where time seems to slow down during like really important plays or in competitions like there was this hockey player who said this one play felt like it lasted 10 minutes, but in reality, it only took eight seconds. Wait, 10 minutes and eight seconds? That's insane. It really is. And it seems like those altered states of consciousness we were talking about, like that flow state athletes get into, or even just being really immersed in nature, those can trigger these shifts in how we experience time. So we've got emergencies, sports, those moments of like really intense focus. Are there any other times these teas tend to happen? Well, this might get a little uh, out there, but psychedelics have been connected to some really intense teas too. Okay, now we're getting into some really wild stuff. I remember the article talked about this guy who had like extreme time dilation while he was looking at his stopwatch during an LSD trip. It was like his brain was processing time totally differently. It's a crazy phenomenon, right? We're still figuring out exactly how it works, but we know that psychedelics can seriously change how we experience time. Imagine your brain is like a clock, 
And psychedelics kind of change the speed of the gears. It can make time feel like it's stretching out or even compressing, like squeezing it together. That's a great way to think about it. Just be visualize what might be going on in the brain during those experiences. But, you know, some people might say teas are just like tricks of memory. That time isn't actually slowing down, but it's just that our memories of those events are like super vivid. So it just feels like time stretched out. Yeah, that's a pretty common thing to think. But there's actually evidence that teas are more than just like a memory glitch. A recent poll asked people who've had teas, and most of them said it felt like a real in-the-moment experience, not just a messed up memory. And a lot of them said they had time to think and do things that would be impossible at normal speed. So if it's not just adrenaline or bad memory, then what's really going on? This is where it starts to get kind of philosophical, I think. Well, some researchers think the key is in the connection between like, our sense of self and how we experience time. In those altered states where teas happen, the line between ourselves and the world can start to blur. So like our sense of self is tied to our sense of time. Yeah, exactly. And as that sense of self changes, our sense of time changes too. Think about it in normal life. We have a pretty solid idea of ourselves as separate from the world around us. Right. There's like me and then there's everything else. But in those altered states, that line can get fuzzy. We might feel more connected to what's around us, more in the moment. And that shift in how we see ourselves, that could be the key to understanding how time can stretch and shrink like that. Wow. That's pretty mm -hmm. mind-blowing. So you're saying that our experience of time is actually way more fluid than we usually think yeah that's what the research seems to show and the implications of that well those are pretty huge you know this is all super interesting but i'm curious what does this all mean for us like for how we understand reality that's the million dollar question isn't it and it's something that's been debated by philosophers and scientists forever you know but teas might give us some new ways to look at it so Welcome back to our deep dive into time expansion experiences. Now, we've already talked about some pretty crazy stuff, but I really want to get deeper into these altered states of consciousness. Yeah, those moments where our sense of time just goes totally out the window. Exactly. Like, mm. we talked about emergencies, sports, even psychedelics as triggers, but how do these altered states actually cause those shifts in time? Well, one way to think about it is that, like, our normal experience of time is based on routines and predictability. You know, yeah. our brains are constantly trying to guess what's going to happen next based on what's happened before. So it's like our brains are building this like mental merp of time based on what we expect to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in those altered states, those expectations get thrown out the window. Oh, oh. Think about the shock of an emergency, right? Or the intense focus you need for like an athletic performance or how psychedelics just completely change how your mind works. Yeah, yeah. In those moments, your brain is forced to process information differently. So it's like those moments kind of jolt us out of our normal way of keeping track of time. And our brains have to like adapt really quickly. Exactly. And when that happens, our sense of time can become more fluid, more subjective. It's like our brains are trying to make sense of all this unexpected input, and time can seem to stretch or shrink as a result. You know, it reminds me when you travel to a new place. Everything is unfamiliar, and you're constantly taking in all this new stuff. Right. And what happens, time often feels different, doesn't it? Yeah, totally. It's the same principle. Take emergencies, for example. That rush of adrenaline, that heightened awareness, it can lead to sensory overload. And that can make time seem to slow down. So it's not that time itself is actually changing. It's just that, like, our perception of it is changing because of these intense experiences. That's the key takeaway. Our brains are amazingly adaptable. They're always adjusting how we see the world based on the information we're getting. And in these altered states, that adaptability extends to how we experience time. It's kind of crazy to think that something as basic as time can be messed with by our own minds. It really is. It makes you question everything you think you know about reality, you know? Yeah, totally. You know, what I've always found interesting about teas is that they often seem to happen during really important moments, like emergencies, peak performance, those kind of profound spiritual experiences. Do you think there's a connection there? Hmm, that's a really interesting point. There very well could be. In those big moments, our attention is laser focused. We're totally present, completely absorbed in what's happening. That level of immersion could definitely play a role in changing how we experience time. It's like our brains are putting all their energy into those crucial moments and like stretching out time as a result. Exactly. It's as if those moments get burned into our memories with more detail, you know, so they feel longer and more important when we look back on them. 
Which brings us back to the idea that our sense of self is connected to how we perceive time. <laughs> In those moments of heightened awareness, the line between us and the world seems to disappear. And as that separation fades, our experience of time can expand. It's like we're tapping into a different way of being conscious, one where time isn't this rigid, linear thing anymore. It's more fluid, more personal. That's both a beautiful and kind of a scary thought, isn't it? That something as fundamental as time is so tied up with how we see ourselves. It really is. It reminds us that reality, at least how we experience it, isn't necessarily fixed and objective. It's more like a creation of our own minds. It feels like we're talking about science fiction, but all this stuff is based on real research and real people's experiences, you know? I know. That's what's so cool about this. We're pushing the limits of what we know about consciousness and time, using science and personal stories to put the pieces together. It's like we're explorers, discovering this whole new world of human experience. And who knows what we'll find as we keep digging deeper. I can't wait to find out. Okay, so we've talked about a lot today, from how we experience time in everyday life to the big implications of T's for understanding what's real, even. Yeah. This has honestly been one of the most mind-blowing deep dives we've ever done. It's definitely up there. But before we wrap things up, I want to leave our listeners with something to think about. I do love a good cliffhanger. So... If our experience of time is so fluid and subjective, do you think it's possible to, like, control it? Could we train our minds to slow down time whenever we want, to really savor those good moments or even speed through the bad ones? Now that's a question worth exploring. All right, welcome back to The Deep Dive. We've been talking all about these wild time expansion experiences, and now we've got to tackle the big question. Can we, like, actually control time? Can we learn to actually change how we experience it? It's a question that people have been asking forever. Right. And while we're not, you know, time traveling superheroes or anything, yeah. there's some evidence that we can actually influence our perception of time, at least a little. Okay, so maybe not full on time stopping, but you're saying we're not totally stuck with how time feels. Right. Remember how we were talking about how our brains process information mm -hmm. and how the more new information we take in, the slower time seems to go. Yeah, yeah. Well, in theory, if we can intentionally expose ourselves to more new stuff, more novelty, we might be able to stretch out our experience of time. Okay, so like skydiving. Yeah. Something that would just blow my mind with new information. Well, sure, that's one way to do it. Yeah. But there are less, uh, shall we say, intense ways to add novelty to your life. Okay, good. Because I'd rather not jump out of a plane. Yeah. What else could we do? Yeah. Especially if it means I can make those boring work meetings feel shorter. Well, like we were saying, traveling to new places is a great one. Remember how vacations can feel longer? Yeah. That's because everything's unfamiliar. Your brain's working hard to take it all in. Right, right. And learning new skills is another good one. Like, think about when you first start learning an instrument or a new language. Mm -hmm. It always feels like it takes forever to get the hang of it, right? Oh, totally. But then as you get better, time seems to speed up. That's so true. It's like the learning curve kind of messes with your sense of time. Exactly. Basically, anything that challenges your brain and makes it adapt can potentially change how you perceive time. Even little things like taking a different route to work or trying a new recipe can make time feel a bit more, well, expansive. So the key is to, like, shake things up, get out of our routines. It makes sense when we're stuck in a rut. It feels like time is just flying by. Exactly. But when we're learning and experiencing new things, it feels like time stretches out a bit. That's the idea. Yeah. But there's another really interesting part of this I think we should talk about. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. You mean like being present in the moment. How does that fit into all this time stuff? Well, when we're really mindful, we're paying close attention to everything. You know, our senses, our thoughts, our feelings. We're not dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. Yeah. We're just like completely absorbed in the now. And that awareness, that being in the moment, could actually change how we experience time. Yeah, potentially. When we practice mindfulness, we train our brains to really savor each moment, to experience time more fully, more richly. It's like we're like taking back our time, like we're not just letting the clock control us anymore. I love that. It's about appreciating the time we have, really experiencing it, making the most of every moment. So maybe we can't stop time completely or travel through wormholes or anything, but it sounds like we do have some power over how we experience it. Yeah, I think so. If we seek out new experiences, practice mindfulness and just pay attention to the present moment, we can really stretch those seconds and make time feel less fleeting. It's true. And who knows, maybe with enough practice, we can unlock even more control over time. 
the possibilities are pretty incredible when you think about it. That about wraps up our deep dive into time expansion experiences. Yeah. We've covered a lot from how we experience time every day to like the mind bending implications it has for how we understand reality. This has honestly been an amazing journey. It really has. I hope everyone listening enjoyed it as much as we did. You know, time is precious. Don't just let it slip away. Embrace the now. And maybe, just maybe, you'll have your own time-bending adventures. You never know. <laughs>